Welcome to Pets in Paradise TV, the show that explores the relationship between humans and animals in one of the most beautiful places on Earth, Hawaii. Here's what's coming up in the next half hour. But enjoy the view and hang out in Waikiki. Living in Hawaii isn't all play. Sometimes it's a lot of work. Take Bali, for example. She's hard at work learning new tricks and showing visitors around. I think she thinks it's her puppy, and that's why she's so protective of her. You've probably seen lots of odd couples, but a dog and a rabbit? It's true, and we'll introduce you to a pair that are inseparable. Oh, and you've never seen anything quite like this. It's a mobile wave machine, and it's just for dogs. Plus, we'll find out all about the Australian Shepherd, and it's all about the breed. Pets in Paradise TV starts now. All dogs are special, but some are extraordinary. Bali is one such exception. Like a Las Vegas magician, she's got an outfit and the tricks to match. Hi, my name's Susie. This is my dog, Bali, and we want to show you some tricks. Bow, bang, play dead. Bali, sneeze. Good girl. Six-year-old Bali is a Jacoby, a mix of a Jack Russell Terrier and a Beagle. Bali, set the ball. Good girl. But Susie says Bali clearly has some human in her too. She knows tricks dogs just don't know. I started training her ever since she was one month old and she just picked it up really fast. She's just a smart dog. Bali, what aloha means? <laughs> he had kisses, huh? Roll over, roll over. Good girl. Body bow. Yoga, yoga, yoga. Stretch, stretch, stretch. No, that other direction. <laughs> okay, go, go. Not to let her talents go to waste, Bali has a special job. She helps Susie give private tours around the island. Many visitors want Bali to come along because they miss their pet back home. Most of our customer requests Bali because they miss their pet in the mainland or anywhere around the world. Bali knows many tricks, about 20 tricks, and uh, every year we try to teach her two new tricks. Bali's tricks attract a lot of attention. Everyone can't help but fall for the tiny superstar. Bali puts a smile on everybody's face, and that's actually my reward to see people happy and their reaction. Sometimes they just scream when they see her skateboard or boogie board. They get so excited. Seems that Bali was born for the limelight. Her low center of gravity helps her skate and surf with ease. That's right, Bali surfs too. Let's go surfing. Let's go surfing. Yeah. Let's go surfing. Wait, wait, come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Perfect form, Bali. All this sure does work up a sweat. Time to cool off. Bali enjoyed the view and hang out in Waikiki. As a Jacoby, Bali was born with intelligence and a loving and outgoing personality. But her hard work and training with her owner Susie has helped her become an extraordinary dog. You've heard stories about animals of different species becoming friends. Dogs and cats, chickens and puppies, tigers and bears, and so on. Are these relationships based on science, or is it just a fluke? With more and more data coming in, it's become clear to scientists that certain parts of the brain in all animals are capable of emotion, joy, and grief, and express it to other animals, no matter what the species. Now, a tale about two unlikely friends, a predator and its prey. Predator and Prey, 
One a hunter, the other the hunted. That's how nature designed it. But this odd pair is defying nature. They basically grew up together. Rabbit was here first and Hoku came as a puppy and, and she always thought that rabbit belonged to her. Meet Hoku the German Shepherd and Coco the Bunny, an animal odd couple. Hoku moves, the dog moves. If Coco goes, the dog goes. Coco was the first to join Frank's home, a little ball of fur given as a Mother's Day gift from a neighbor. Then a month later on Father's Day came Hoku, then just a puppy looking to have some fun. The dog wanted to play with the rabbit all the time, but the rabbit didn't want a darn thing to do with the dog. So it took about a year or so for the rabbit to get used to the dog being around, and we used to put a little chicken wire fence in the backyard so the two of them could play in there. So eventually I figured out to run the runner so the rabbit would have more room to run around and play in the yard. So they've been, I guess, almost like mother and daughter here. That she protects the rabbit from even cats would come to the fence and she'll charge the, uh, the fence to make the cats go away when the rabbit's out. She's very protective. German Shepherds are working dogs. You see them used by the police and military to chase down crooks and bad guys, never scared to protect their owners. Hoku, while far from a police dog, still lets her protective instinct show when it comes to Coco. About every year when we have Halloween, we all go out front and put up a tent for all the kids to come by and give out candy to them so they don't have to walk down our walkway. And, and when the kids want to come up and pet the rabbit, she'll walk over there and try to block them from getting near the rabbit. She'll actually sometimes stand over the rabbit trying to protect her if it gets too crowded. Great protectors, German Shepherds are also great at adopting friends. Cats, birds, even rabbits. Every afternoon when it starts getting shady out back, that's when I'll bring Coco out and, and put her out on the, on the harness so she can run around. And then of course, Hoku takes over the guard duty, so we don't even have to worry about Coco. She's well protected. So we'll keep her out until it gets dark and then I'll bring her in. And usually Hoku still wants me to leave her out so she can play with her. Even though they are best friends from the start, Frank knows not to leave them alone. No matter how much you train them, dogs still have very strong instincts that can take over if triggered, turning this sweetheart shepherd back into a predator. I think because Hoku never had puppies and she's a female and she thinks the rabbit's her baby, I think. I think she thinks it's her puppy and that's why she's so protective of her. And it's not just Hoku that needs to be watched. Coco has some naughty habits of her own. Sometimes Coco, when she gets mad at Hoku for being too pushy to tell her what to do, she'll sit there and pound her back paw on the ground and Hoku will back off because it's like almost like a warning, leave me alone for a little while. While they're definitely friends, Frank thinks Hoku and Coco are more like family to each other and fight like family too. If anything were to happen to one of them, the other one's not gonna know what to do. And especially if that rabbit goes first, Hoku's going to need to go to a dog psychiatrist because she's going to be lost without that rabbit. Growing up together, spending so much time together, the odd pair has formed an unbreakable bond. While nature may say they shouldn't be so close, Hoku and Coco are breaking all the rules. Proving species is no barrier to friendship. Here's a fun factoid. Aside from being great pets, what do these three dog breeds have in common? The Collie, the German Shepherd, and the Poolie. Need to get the cows back in the barn? These guys can help. The Collie, German Shepherd, and the Poolie are all herding dogs. A class of 25 breeds that the AKC recognizes as having the fabulous ability to control the movement of other animals. Let's meet another one. Today, it's all about the Australian Shepherd. The 17th most popular breed in the US. Also known as an Aussie, the Australian Shepherd is often thought to have originated in Australia. That's a natural conclusion because of its name. But in fact, the Aussie originated in the Western United States in the 1800s. They were bred to herd cattle and rose in popularity after World War II. It wasn't until later though that they became household pets. And they do make good pets, but because they were bred to be working dogs, they do require training to curb some of their herding instincts. 
Luckily, they're very easy to train and actually enjoy obedience classes. They love to please. They're great at dog sports like dog agility races and frisbee. They're also excellent as search and rescue dogs, detection dogs, and guide and therapy dogs. The Aussie is medium size and can weigh anywhere from 30 to 60 pounds. They come in black, red, sometimes called liver, blue merle, which is a black, white, and gray mix, and red merle, which is a red, white, and buff mix. They're known for having a variety of colors on their faces, with many having eyes of two different colors and even split eyes, which are bicolored eyes that may be half brown and half blue. All combinations are acceptable in the breed standards. Most have long tails, but some are born with naturally bobbed tails. Docking is still common in the U.S. where it is still legal. Their water-resistant coat is long and wavy or curly, and they shed a moderate amount yearly and heavily shed their undercoats twice a year. The Aussie is one energetic dog. They require a great deal of exercise because of their high energetic nature, and they get bored easily. And a bored Aussie can become destructive and bark way too much. They like to be with their humans, so much so that they're often called Velcro dogs because of their strong desire to be next to their owner. They aren't just intelligent, but they are considered a breed that adapts easily to different situations and they think for themselves. That's why Aussies are often used to herd unusual livestock, such as rabbits, ducks, and geese. Aussies are not good apartment dogs. They've just got too much energy and need large spaces to play. They need to be trained and obedience classes are a must. If not, their herding instincts can take over and they'll try to take a dominant position in the household. They may even try to nip and chase other pets or people if not trained correctly. They're probably not a good breed for a first time dog owner. Aussies are good with children, although if they're not trained properly, they might try to herd them. You might consider that a bad or possibly a good behavior. As for health issues, Aussies are prone to vision problems, epilepsy, and puppies who have inherited two copies of a certain gene also have an increased risk of being born blind or deaf. The lifespan of an Australian Shepherd is about 12 and a half years. That's a year or two longer than the usual lifespan of a dog of its size. The Australian Shepherd, highly intelligent, highly energetic, demanding, and with the proper training can be a great addition to the household. And now you know all about the Australian Shepherd. Let's look at three more dog breeds and see if you can tell what they have in common. The Labrador Retriever, the Newfoundland, and the Poodle. The Labrador Retriever, the Newfie, and the Poodle all have water in common. They love to swim, and they are all in the top five for their swimming abilities. And it's certain that they'd love what we're gonna show to you next, a chance to go surfing. From hanging 10 to hanging four, paws that is, a new invention is giving dogs a water experience like never before. Behind me now is a 53-foot trailer that we've converted into a wave machine. It's Lucy Pet's gnarly cranking canine wave machine. This 4,000-gallon tank on wheels can churn out waves every six seconds. This funhouse for dogs came from a man whose first mission was feeding dogs. For years, I owned a company called Natural Balance Pet Foods, and I used to donate millions of pounds of food to all the animal rescue groups because it was my belief that they were the ones going into the shelters and, and taking dogs and cats off death row and, and saving lives. After selling the company, Joy didn't want to stop helping dogs, so he started the Lucy Pet Foundation, an organization that takes to the road to help animals in need. Hi, well, I'm Doc Halligan, the Chief Veterinary Officer for the Lucy Pet Foundation. We're a mobile spay and neuter van. We're able to take spay and neuter on the road. This unit also functions as an adoption vehicle. The windows roll up there, and you can see these pets are all here for adoption. But if we were doing a spay and neuter, we can typically do about, per doctor, 30 animals. An on-the-road facility like this one can help a lot of animals, but it all comes at a cost. Per dog, it's about $125 per 
per animal to spay and neuter it. We actually can do surgery for free for city residents of Los Angeles because we have a contract that gives us some money towards it, so there is some subsidy. Sales from Lucy Pet Products help keep the operation going and ultimately save animal lives. Each year, more than two and a half million pets are put down in the U.S. alone. And the fact is that when pets are spayed and neutered, they live 40% longer. So there's no reason to ask, should I do it? Just do it. We have to do marketing on the Lucy Pet Products side, and I've done a lot of Rose Parade floats in my time. So 2012, I did the world's longest and heaviest Rose Parade float with surfing dogs. So I'm bringing that back for 2017, and what you see here is uh, the first ever portable. This is going on tour around the country. We're going to uh, you know, Chicago and Detroit and Miami and Orlando and Phoenix. The wave machine is traveling across the fun in the water. What about the other pets the Lucy Pet Foundation helps? Cowabunga, right? Who's riding the waves? Well, you're not thinking about a cat riding a wave, are you? Well, this is one special cat that we pulled from a very high intake shelter, could have ended up in a barrel, and instead this cat went and starred in a Super Bowl commercial and is now being trained by Matilda Cagney to actually surf and ride a wave. So be looking out for Ricky. Training Ricky here to surf in the wave machine. There is obviously some kind of challenge. First step was to get him uh, to be comfortable on the board, working him in the pool, which we've done. He is a rescue. So this is super exciting and uh, wish us luck. Ricky has a ways to go before he's surfing with the big dogs. Don't worry, if you don't get it right away, Ricky, even your canine pals need a little nudge at first. My primary job with this float here is to get the dogs surfing. Um, you know, they gotta be positioned right on the board, uh, gotta get them acclimated to being 15 feet up in the air. But for the most part, it's, uh, you know, the majority of them seem to enjoy it once they get the hang of it. We can make waves on this thing fairly big. It's just we have a pretty closed space up top, so we need to, you know, keep them about waist high. As you can tell, this wave machine isn't something you see going down the highway every day. So people definitely stop, stare, a lot of cell phones come out. It's the only one of its kind in the world. The wave machine is definitely unique, but Joy wants to make it record-breaking. At 125 feet, he hopes it will set the record as the longest float ever to be featured in the Rose Parade. So it's going to be uh, really a lot of fun to, to see that going down Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. They're trying to save 80,000 dogs a week that are euthanized across the United States. It's, a, it's an amazing, this is an amazing foundation. As it continues on its journey across the country, the Wave Machine and Lucy Pet Foundation are hoping to get more folks on board with its products and its mission to use all proceeds to pay for spaying and neutering and making the lives of pets pretty swell.